on the vlog again. Just can't wait to do a vlog again. The life I love is making vlogs for my friends. And I can't wait to do a vlog again. Doing a vlog again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I may never see again. And I can't wait. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Top Vloggers. As always, I'm your host, I am Mighty Joe, hanging out with your co-host, the lovely cat. As you can see, we have Aaron in the back. It should be another great vlog today. You can join us on all of our social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Top Vloggers. Also, if you'd like to help us reach the top, you can do so by going to www.patreon.com backslash the top vloggers. Without your help and support, these vlogs will be almost impossible to do. There will be a link in the description below. And if you are new here, you can hit that subscribe button, take it one step further, and ring the notification bell to keep you up to date on all the future adventures that will be going on on our channel. So let's get going. Today's adventure brings us to historic Rowan, Indiana. Let's take a stroll around and the lovely cat will tell us a little bit more about this place. Joseph Beckner and his family arrived in what is now Rowan in 1836. He bought 600 acres of forest wilderness south of Eel River. From the federal government, he built and operated a tavern on the southeast corner of what is now the first intersection south of Rowan on the Chippewa Road. Beckner decided the site south of the river was a good place to build a town. Beckner and Elijah Hackelman platted and surveyed the town, June 16th and 17th of 1853. The plat was recorded September 14th, 1853. The town consisted of 39 lots, three streets north and south, and two streets east and west. The streets were Pike, Adams, Walnut, and Allen running east and west, and Washington and the Chippewa Road running north and south. The unusual name of the community was selected by the two men who laid out the town. They used the name of two young girls, Anne Beckner, and the last name of one of them, Roe, hence Rowan. Local tr tradition maintains that the name came from an incident where a young lady named Anne was being chased by Indians, she made it to the Eel River and got into a rowboat and started across the river. People on the other side encouraged her by yelling, Row Anne! Later, when the site was laid out, people remembered that and named the town for it. Growth of the community was very slow. Row Anne was only a stopping point on the road from Rochester to Wabash, called the Chippewa Pike. The town of Stockdale, just two miles downstream from Rowan, competed with Rowan for the mill trade and was more successful. One of the most picturesque settings in the county is the wooden covered bridge spanning the Eel River. The bridge is one of the last two bridges of its kind in the county. The first bridge was built over the river in 1841 but was washed away and another built around 1845. The third bridge was necessitated in 1856 and the existing bridge was built about 1873. The structure has undergone repairs, repainting, and attempted arson. Half of the bridge was destroyed by fire, but the community raised funds to repair the bridge. In 1855, the first business was built by Cornelius Halderman, a sawmill on the Eel River, and two years later a shoe shop op was opened. Rowan's first post office was established in 1860, originally only a stopping point of the road from Rochester to Wabash called the Chippewa Pike. The town began to grow in 1871. The coming of the Detroit, Eel River, and Illinois Railroad in 1871 led to Rowan's growth. An elevator and hotel were built. By 1875, there was also a furniture and coffin factory, wagon shop, and about 31 residences. The Rowan Universalist Church built a meeting house during the summer and fall of 1875 at a cost of $2,500. It began with 11 members. By 1882, 100 were adding the church. By that time, the church was a popular cultural fixture of the community as well. In 1881, 
Roman Lecture Association was formed and was on the Red Path Lecture Bureau circuit. The church served as its local presentation point. Among those to present programs was Miss Laura Dainty, a remarkable elocutionist, the humorist orator Burdette, South Carolina singers, Swiss bell ringers, and James Whitcomb Riley, along many others. Stockdale dwindled as Rowan grew and attracted more and more businesses and social life. Shortly after the railroad came, Cornelius Halderman laid out three additions to the town in 1872, 1881, and 1883. Samuel Butterball platted two additions in 1871 and 1875. Two other additions, Fairfields and Farview, were added at a later date. By 1881, the town at Rowan had grown enough to warrant incorporation under the influence of such families as the Haldermans and Van Buskirks. The community became the business center of Pawpaw Township. The railroad made the community an active shipping point for grain and livestock. The State Ex Exchange Bank was established in 1882 and marked. An opera house was built by George Oren in 1883 and was used for entertainment purposes until 1910 and later used as a gym. Yet again, it was used as a welding and repair shop. By 1886, Rowan had a population of 700. Businesses included Ackerman and Gipe Livery and Feed Stable, two drugstores, S and M Baker and C L Murray, Black and Photo Furniture Dealers, and Undertakers Gidley and Brower Hardware, Doctors Jones and Kidd, Miller House run by R Miller, two dry goods and clothing stores, R Murphy and L Patterson, R K Rhodes Harness Maker. Two Milleries, Ruby and Mead, and Mrs. S. A. Williams. There was also three saloons in town, one for each 333 inhabitants of the town. There were also a graded school and an elevator and three churches, the Christian Church, the Methodist Church, and the Universalist Church. In 1887, the Universalist Church had a Reverend John, a missionary preaching. It also allowed the Christian church to meet and hold their regular services while repairs were being made to the Christian church. In July of 1887, fire struck the community. At about 5 a.m., a fire was discovered in the grain elevator owned by the Wabash Western Railway. The fire was caused by sparks from the engine of the freight train, which had been sidetracked to allow a passenger train to pass by. When the freight train started up, the, the great sparks flew from the engine in great profusion and ignited a quantity of chaff which had collected there. Three cars which had been loaded with wheat by Patterson and Shoemaker were standing on a siding near the elevator. They were pushed down the track and saved. The elevator contained between 6,000 and 7,000 bushels of wheat, principally owned by Patterson and Shoemaker and Gildy and Brower. There were also a carload of each of salt and lime owned by George Schilling, Schillinger and Son. It required great effort to save the train depot building. The residents of A.M. Oswald, located near the elevator, narrowly escaped destruction, although one side of the building was badly blistered. Despite the fire, the people of Rowan rallied and rebuilt the elevator and continued to grow. Rowan appeared to be on the eve of a manufacturing boom. In 1888, the Rowan Manufacturing Company organized with a beginning capital stock of $4,000. Its directors for the first year were R.G. Arnold, J.E. Tillman, Thad Hoke, R.J. Brown, and H. Rehard. Hoke and Reset began erection of an elegant dwelling house with a slate roof for J.J. Lukens on South Main Street. Court Williams established a second barber shop in town with room over Meyer's dry goods store. Harry Bowman op opened a carriage repository 
in the Lavengood building south of the meat market. The Rowan schools were in excellent condition under the direction of Professor W. W. Black. New walks were even built around the schoolhouse grounds, adding much to the appearance of things. The Rowan band had organized and performed concerts in Rowan and Urbana as well. By 1894, Rowan had the following two businesses, two drug stores, S. M. Baker and W. H. Weber, H. I. Bowman Livery and Feed Barn, B. F. Boyer Shoemaker, Dr. George H. Broadbeck, Maud Cannon Millinery, a newspaper, The Clarion, run by L. M. Spots, Colt and Dedrick Sawmill, Colt and Oswald Furniture, an undertaking, E. F. Connor Jewelry, The Exchange Bank, two general stores run by Fogelsong and Company, and J. C. Gochnor, two hardware stores, A. T. Gidley and Oker and Stone, two grocery stores, Amos Gype and C. B. Gert, The Squire's House Hotel run by M. H. King, Harness Shop, Good Brothers, two meat markets, Jacob Myers and J. E. Ross, two blacksmiths, John Oblenis and William Rank, saloon run by Minor Rutherford, the Rowan Creamery, Schillinger and Lukens and Company Elevator. Another disastrous fire occurred in 1901, which began in the furniture store building, destroying much of the business section of the town. The bank corner was wiped out. The only item that survived was the safe. The bank rebuilt their building with the 100F upstairs on the East Frank Schuler rebuilt his and the rest farther north were built. The only thing left to remind the community of its pioneer days is the restored log house built by an early town settler, Alexander Abshire. The first telephone exchange was installed in 1902. In 1957, Rowan residents had dial telephones installed by the United Telephone Company. In 1903, cement sidewalks were laid, and in 1913, the town bonded for a waterworks. Electric lights were brought to the town a year later through the efforts of citizens who organized a local company buying power from the power company in Wabash. In 1913, Mrs. Martha Van Buskirk wrote to the State Library asking for direction and assistance to establish a library in Rowan. Land was purchased and the library was operated from the schoolhouse with books donated and some borrowed from the State Library. Sufficient funds were pledged by citizens of Rowan and Pawpaw Township Consequently, on January 16, 1914, the Wabash Circuit Court legally determined the Rowan Public Library's establishment. Mrs. Van Buskirk obtained a $10,000 Carnegie grant for the building of a library. She was selected as president of the first library board. Other members were Dwight Dubois, W. H. Weber, Mrs. Leslie Wiley, Wirt, and Miss Jessie Harris. The cornerstone for the Carnegie Library was laid in 1916. Librarians since 1918 have been Daisy Schrader, Ethel Floral, Nora Story, Minnie Mall, Turi Koblenz, Hazel Day, and Marie Hunter. By 1976, the library had 5,485 adult books and 2,887 juvenile books, plus reference books and periodicals. By 1921, the town had paved streets. Fire protection for both Rowan and Paw Paw Township is located in Rowan. By 1928, the population was 490 in the incorporated town. S. M. Baird was president of the town. J. E. Turner was postmaster. The community also had a bank, weekly newspaper, The Clarion, and three or four churches. The Christian, Dunkard, Methodist Episcopal 
and Progressive Brethren, the town was tied to the outside world by the American Express and Western Union Telegraph. The first school in the area was a log cabin in 1837. The first school building in Rowan was built in 1885. In 1892, Noble Harder, a teacher at the school, began preparing the high school. In 1895, the high school graduates were Daisy Gildley, Edith King, Edith Van Buskirk, Faye Spots, Dow Van Buskirk, Alice Harris, and Ross Luckridge. In 1899, the school building burned, but was rebuilt in 1900. A modern school was built in 1941, financed jointly by the township and the WPA. The schools were closed in 1962 and became part of the Wabash Metropolitan School District. Students attended Northfield High School and Sharp Creek Elementary School. One of Rowan's more prominent citizens was Ross Franklin Lockridge, who graduated from Rowan High School in 1893. He taught school in the area and later became the official state historian for Indiana and author of numerous historical works. Early in this century, Lockridge was largely responsible for promoting the study of pioneer Indiana history. His son was Ross Lockridge Jr., who wrote the book Rain Tree County which was made into a movie. Ross Jr. said that the setting for the mythical county was the area around Rowan and the Eel River that he had visited with his father as a child. In 1959, the town was governed by a board with Melvin Yoakum, President Ross Watson, and Charles York. There were approximately 35 business establishments, a booster club, converted a former furniture store into a community center that has become the general meeting place for many of the community's organizations. It also utilizes by individuals for such events as committee meetings and reunions. Probably the greatest project of the 1950s was the banding together by the community residents to establish the Rowan Medical and Postal Building. Located on Main Street and Fronted with Stan Stone, Dr. Richard and Robert LaSalle occupied the medical rooms. From 1875 to 1923, the medical needs of the community had been taken care of by Dr. G.P. Kidd and then his son, Dr. J.G. Kidd, who served from 1926 to 1956. Dr. G.P. Kidd owned the first Oldsmobile in town in 1905. Well, thank you so much, Kat, for that lovely story. Uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, it was nice to learn more about the history of this place. And uh, uh, we brought the dog along with us. Uh, sorry for his snoring. He's always snoring. That's all he does is snore, eat, and sleep, it, it seems like. So I think that's going to do it for us here today. Uh, we have had a wonderful time uh, as we uh, uh, have visited this town before um nice to be able to go across that bridge um and like i said uh sorry about the dog snoring that's just kind of what he does he's always snoring uh there's a very beautiful sunset right there uh it's going to take us out so we'll see you again tomorrow for another vlog until then top vloggers